We're going to begin today's show in Baltimore, where we'll visit with a talented football team that's a bit different from some of the nation's other powerhouses. Joe McCann has this week's five-star feature. When you see St. Francis Academy play football this season, be sure to take notice of number four. It'll be worn by a different player in each game as a tribute to Aaron Wilson, who tragically died of cancer last spring. Aaron Wilson was an amazing player. He uh, was an amazing person. He was an amazing student. He came to us, all, you know, you hear this as a cliche. He was infectious. His personality was unbelievable. The administrators, teachers, players, students, coaches, everybody loved what he was and what he represented. Not only was he ranked number one in our state at the time, but more importantly, he was just selfless. It's crazy because every day I have Aaron, it's me and a picture of Aaron on my phone. And I just look at that and it really just, it gives me all the motivation to just keep working. Because Aaron, when he was here, he that's all he did was work. And he's just, he was just a great kid. That's what I think, just do it for Aaron. Yeah, A4, yeah. We, got, we really got something to prove because he, really he really wanted to play. So we got to work hard for him. Knowing these young men play for their late teammate is just part of their story. You first need to understand where they come from. I mean, there's so much to tell, but it's the oldest African-American institution in the United States. It's the first place education was founded for people of color in 1828. Elizabeth's mother, Mary Lane, founded this school because she recognized the children of slaves couldn't read or write, and it was illegal for us to do it. And at the time, if you were caught reading or writing, you'd be killed. So she utilized the, the scripture, the Bible, to be able to help them read and teach them how to write. The world, looking from outside in, we're in East Baltimore, we're next door prison. I don't even understand who or what we are day to day. They don't even come in. And the perception is always, A, we're all about uh, athletics. We're the school that is always the underdog. You know, we're, we're the perception is always that we can't and we won't be able to develop young people to accomplish the ultimate dream, and that's to attain a free education at the collegiate level. And we pride ourselves in making sure that our students not only graduate, but they get to their universities and they excel. St. Francis has only been playing football since 2008. The administration saw it as a way to reach more young men in the area, giving them something to do and take pride in. And the players have. The Panthers are now one of the most talented teams in the country. But they do it without the luxuries that many of the nation's other powerhouses enjoy. This small school wasn't built to house a football program. There's no stadium, not even a practice field. And the weight room, it's hardly big enough for an entire football team. One of the biggest struggles is having to drive everywhere for practice. We use three to four different venues. We've always been in vans and it's taken us 30 minutes to and 30 minutes back. So you're talking about an hour after study hall. We work out on the street, we work out on concrete. I feel like that makes us the dogs that we are, you feel me? So I actually like it. Uh, other people might say they don't, but I actually like it because it comes from nothing and you go to other school, go to other teams and you beat them. Culture is different. It's different. It's it's just a dog mentality. It's just how we do things. Uh, I feel like it's good too. I feel like it's good because not knowing when you're going to work out and it's going to give you a build up. You're like, oh yeah, I got to get on the field. You got to get on the field. You got to get somewhere to get some work. I feel like that's good. The culture, the attitude, the grind, it all works. The Panthers have Division I prospects up and down their roster. Quarterback John Griffith is committed to Bowling Green, and he's surrounded by D1 talent on offense, including some 300-pound offensive linemen. The defense, which also has multiple players with FBS offers, is led by Oklahoma commit Derek Moore on the D-line and four-star linebacker Jay Sean Barham. They're out to prove they're among the nation's elite, and they have the schedule to do so. Their 2021 slate includes 10 teams from seven states and two countries. Yes, they play a team from Canada. They've already played St. Thomas Aquinas in games with good counsel from Washington, D.C., De La Salle from California, and national juggernaut IMG Academy all await them. I'm a firm believer uh, from a coaching standpoint, or even just in life, if you want to meet um, goals in life, you have to challenge yourself. And challenging yourself doesn't always require the safe way. It's not the easy way. So we pride ourselves in trying to compete and be the best. So, you know, we put together a team that is willing and able to try to play anybody, anywhere. A team is not created of talent. A team is created from chemistry. So, yes, we're physically talented, and yes, we have some talent, but it takes still that work and that willingness to want to do everything uh, behind the scenes. Representing the city is huge because, like, you think about Baltimore, you kind of think about violence and stuff, and we just try to show a bigger thing than that, and this is a, it's just a huge project, honestly. And it's fun showing, like, the people of Baltimore what we can do. Wherever they go, they are sure to make Baltimore proud. 
and they'll do so with their former teammate looking over them. This season is completely dedicated to him and his legacy. We're always going to remember him. One of the things that we forget when people pass on is that you remember him for a little while and you forget them, but the kids want to make sure that he was never forgotten as a program. We're going to keep it going every year after that. Whoever get the web, we just going to show up with it. Keep trying to keep a legacy going on. And one day I told Coach Messiah is, um, this year I'm going to be playing in an All-American game. And I told him, like, I need that, I need that number four locked in for me because Aaron was actually supposed to be in that All-American game with me. And I just want to, like, play with that number on and get that number to that to his family so they could remember that. Like, he was, going, he was supposed to be in that game. I wore it for him. I'm going to try to show up for him. I would love for anybody and anybody to come to St. Francis, spend a day with us before they make a judgment or even an assumption of who and what we are. There's a lot of great people in this building, the kids, the coaches, the families, the administration, the teachers that only want something that's special and that's success for any young man or young lady that walks in our building. In Baltimore, Maryland, I'm Joe McCann. Thanks for checking out Sports Stars of Tomorrow on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and please subscribe to our channel so you see all of the latest content.